So it's finally time to take technique and turn it into action for real. I've done a lot of testing with these screens and the screens are all for my replica of Cinderella's work dress, which I have been making over the course of the last several months. But one of the main things that I was working with was trying to figure out the design that's across the entire dress. And you can't find this design anywhere online on fabric. And I have finally been able to take all the pictures and information and turn them into designs, which I have a PDF download for any of you interested. But I took those designs and I turned them into screen printing screens, which I'll now be able to print onto my fabric, which I dyed a few months ago. That whole process of making these screens and just the process in general of screen printing is on a video that you can find on my channel. Now we're just gonna take those screens that we made and print all the different repeats, all the different colors onto my fabric. This is gonna take quite some time. We not only have three different designs that we're working with, we also have four different colors, or actually five different colors. So we have the main like floral design that's on the skirt going up that has four colors in it. And then we've got the repeat design that's across all of the fabric and it also has four colors. And then we've got the border at the bottom edge, which this is one thing that I didn't um, talk about in all my other videos. I kind of just forgot about it, but I finally did make the design for that and the screen and the download of um, all these PDFs will include this one now. But anyway, this one is in another color. It's like the fifth color to this whole design. So now we're just going to go ahead and do that. First, let's talk about the dies and that process that I'm going to do to make those dies workable for screen printing. The thickener for using dies for screen printing is called sodium alginate and it's actually made from seaweed. So I started off adding four teaspoons to four cups of water and then I ended up adding another three or so teaspoons to this to get it thick enough. But for the best results, start off with less, mix it together and let it sit for at least an hour and mixing it a few times in between and then you can kind of gauge if you need more water or more seaweed and such. You can also put this mixture in a blender to get the seaweed to dissolve and unclump quicker. Something else to note on this thickener is if you let this sit at room temperature for several days, it will actually end up thinning the whole mixture. So to keep this from happening and to help preserve it, you store it in the fridge and that helps all around. Now I'm ready to mix up my dye colors and for the coral colors, I used coral pink, powder pink, and ivory. For the green, I used lime green and ivory. And for the blue, I used robin's egg blue and ivory. Once the colors were finalized, it's time for the scary step of actually printing on my fabric. So I decided to start off with the border print because there's a section in the border where one of the leaves of the main flower arrangement fits in. So I found it just better to have the whole border repeated evenly along the entire edge and then I can go align the flower leaf to that specific part of the border. The main part of this step was just to get the border evenly along the straight grain of the fabric. So for this I just made sure the frame of my screen was aligned to the bottom edge of my fabric. And then it was just printing, printing, and printing along the entire four yards of the skirt.
once the border was printed and dry onto the main flower prints. So there's going to be seven of these prints and they are about 19 inches apart. I set up three stations or boards so I can do three prints at a time. So something I discovered along this process of testing was the fact that I actually didn't have to let each print dry before I went on to the next color. So I was originally thinking I would need to print the main coral, let it dry for at least an hour to get it not sticky at all, and then I would go on to the darker color, let it dry for another hour, and then print the lighter color, let it dry for an hour, you get the point. A lot of drying time in between. And you would have to do this if you're using a paint, because as soon as that paint's on that fabric and not dry, when you put a screen printing frame on top of that wet paint, it's gonna stick to that bottom of that frame, and if you move it at all to realign your position of the screen, it's gonna smudge the ink and all that. It would just be a mess. But with this dye mixture, I actually found that it just soaked into that fabric really well, and I could put a screen pretty much right after printing the other one, put a new screen on to print the next color, it didn't smudge that dye mixture. It was just, there's something about how it just absorbed into the fabric that it didn't seem to matter that it was still wet and I was moving on to the next screen, if that all made sense. So once all the colors had been printed, I then let these three prints dry, and then I peeled off that under fabric and moved on to the next three designs. Onto the repeat design, the process of printing all the tiny little flowers definitely took the longest out of all these different prints, and I could have made the design on a larger frame, and that would have made it a little faster, just not so much rearranging of the frame and such, but one, I didn't have any more large frames, and second, I actually find it easier to just maneuver the smaller frames, and so it really wasn't too much of a hassle to just pick up the frame, rearrange it, and do all those little prints. There ended up being four repeats in between the large flower designs, and then at the top of the large flower designs, there's actually a tiny little flower, which is the same flower as all the repeat flowers, and from there I was able to arrange all my lines of the little flowers across the skirt, and so that just gave good anchor points for where to arrange all the rest of the tiny little flowers. For the seventh print of the large flower design, it's placed at the center back of the skirt, and since there's a seam at that center back, I decided to first sew that seam and then print this flower design on top. If I had sewed this seam earlier, it would have just made it harder to get the fabric laying flat for printing all the little tiny repeats. So here we have it, the finished printed skirt. It has all the repeats of the big flowers and all the tiny repeats in between and the border at the bottom edge. And honestly, this whole process didn't take as long as I 
thought it would. Um, I worked on it for about three days and they were not full days. The first two were just a couple hours here and there. And then the last day was a little more full time trying to get everything printed. So the process just took a lot quicker than I was thinking because I didn't let them dry in between and that worked out really well. This just needs to be soaked in some soda ash fixer which will set the dye in the fabric and at the same time, it will wash away that seaweed thickener. And what we'll end up with is the nice drapey flow of the original fabric, but with these designs on it. I am so happy with this. Um, of course, one thing you'll notice after I do the soda ash stuff, um, it's not, it gets a little less vibrant, the whole design. That's just because the thickness of the seaweed is washing away and it's just dyeing the fabric, which um, just, the whole thing just kind of dulls a little bit. But if you wanted this very vibrant, like, design um, you could of course use paint like i talked about in my testing video but the paint will leave a similar texture with how the seaweed is currently creating texture with this dye mixture i added two cups of soda ash to about three gallons of cool water and after doing some testing it seemed that hot water made the colors a bit duller than when i did cool water and that's why i've chosen to do cold water or cool water after adding the fabric, I made sure to stir it a bit to make sure all the printed areas got a good chance to soak up the liquid. And then I let it sit for about 30 minutes, stirring a couple times in between. After that, it went into the wash for a quick rinse and wash and then dry. And just like that, the dye is set in the fabric. It has washed away the seaweed thickener and we now have fabric ready to be assembled into Cinderella's skirt. And I am just so excited to finally be here. It just feels like it's been years in the works um, from the first time that I wanted to start making this and I did the costume study on my blog and then a few months ago starting this whole process and then I'm finally here with a skirt that's printed with the design. Um, it's just kind of a surreal feeling and I am so looking forward to getting that cartridge pleated and turning it into an actual skirt. And again, you can find the PDF download of all the prints that I did on my website and previous videos uh, such as a screen printing tutorial if you missed how to do that and the testing of all the paints and dyes that you can use for printing on fabric can be found also. And then to continue on, we will be making the skirt, making the bodice, making the accessories, and then have a final photo shoot of this finished dress. And I'm so looking forward to that. Thanks for being here for along the whole process and for the continuing journey. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons who continue to support me in so many ways. And I look forward to the continuing journey.